Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today for this Green Forum chat. I'm Jeff Kelly. Uh, I'm today joined by Tim McCoy. Tim's a senior director of design here at Pivotal, where he's working to improve the user experience of Pivotal's big data products. Tim, thanks for joining me. Absolutely, good to hear. So today we're going to talk about the new and improved Green Plum Command Center, uh, so referred to often as just GPCC. So your team released the third public beta of the new P uh, GPCC, so it includes a complete overhaul of the user interface, uh, which of course is your kind of area of expertise. So I want to kind of dig into that, but first, for those kind of new to Green Plum, can you talk a little bit about just you know what is GPCC and, and the role it plays? Absolutely, yeah. So GPCC is the web-based monitoring and administration interface for Greenplum database. Uh, it basically allows you to see running queries and queued queries that are currently in the system, as well as the, its performance metrics, and you can also look back through performance and query history to do troubleshooting and reporting. Okay. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. So it's obviously an important part of the part of the product, uh, important for administrators. So why did you, why did Pivotal feel the need to overhaul uh, the command center, uh, particularly from kind of this UI standpoint? Yeah, well, there are some two interrelated kind of technical and user experience reasons, right? So the, uh, the existing 2.x app is a Flash-based application. It's a big monolithic app uh, that was hard to maintain and uh, was just wasn't that fun to use, right? It just wasn't that, uh, that good of an experience. And so... In developing uh, a, off of a new code base, it really allows us to develop a browser-native UI experience, um, and it allows us to work at a level uh, that is a lot more responsive to customer feedback and user needs. So as customers uh, kind of let you know what they like, what they don't like, you can iterate and update the, the UI to kind of meet those, those changes, meet those demands? Yeah, that's right. I mean, as we've... Uh, you know, in our in our agile development process, right, which is really focused on small iterative cumulative releases, mm -hmm. um, we can talk with customers weekly and incorporate the things we're learning and uh, test out the things that we are developing with representative users and really help to kind of steamroll that process of getting better experience out. Right, and I mean that fit. That's right in line, of course, with Pivotal's whole way of building software. Right, so right. We're, we're actually uh, taking some of our own advice and doing it internally. So that's great. Um, okay, so could you fill us in some of the details? What are some of the biggest improvements uh, that users are going to see? Uh, what can they look forward to? Yeah, so there's just three major things that we focused on for this new release. Um, the first and foremost was really just getting rid of that flash UI. I mean, you know, frankly, it's not that. It's a frustrating experience uh, in a lot of ways, the current uh, UI. And so um, developing a browser-native UI allows us, allows the user to have really like random access to screens and to, to URLs of, in the system, right? So for example, working uh, through some troubleshooting and identifying a problem query, um, that now has a unique URL where you can copy and paste it into an email, you can put it into a report, and you can get right back to to that information right at a later time. Um, the other major change we made is about the way that you access history. So in the existing flash-based UI, um, you, you're pegged on the present and you can look further and further back in time, but in doing so you get less and less granularity of your data. So what we've done is we decoupled uh, the history from the present, right? So now uh, in the new UI, an administrator can choose the start and end point for their time frame they're interested in, and GPCC will return uh, the data set with appropriate granularity for that period of time. Okay. Um, so let's take that one step for, for forward. Um, you, you kind of alluded to some of the benefits, but really translate all those features and these new capabilities into, you know, how is that going to make the life of a Greenplum admin easier, more enjoyable? Yeah. So I think the, the, the really big thing is this ability to look back um, at the performance of your system and of your queries at a particular point in time. So a common scenario that we hear a lot that we focused on developing uh, a better workflow for is this notion of you know kind of coming in the next day or, or later in the day you want to go back and troubleshoot something that happened uh, either you know six hours ago or a couple of days ago 
And being able to go into GPCC, say, all right, show me the queries that were hit on this particular database during the time period of you know, 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Right? And show me also the corresponding server metrics and performance metrics so that you can go through there and then match those up with logs and, and really get a better sense of what's going on in your system and being able to troubleshoot those things. Uh, the other bit is looking back, say, for um, a quarterly report right? and being able to say, all right, you know, today is, is July 15th, but I, I need to get data from, you know, Q3 or Q2, rather. So I need to see April, May, and June's performance metrics. Right? And being able to put those all into one screen and um, include that in a report. Okay, great. Um, I kind of have a more of a big picture question. Uh, maybe I should have asked this kind of at the start, but I'm just curious to get your view on... Like, what is your philosophy, design philosophy, when it comes to tools and products like uh, the uh, GPCC? I mean, what, what, what is kind of your guiding philosophy? Is it, is it influenced by certain things? Is it influenced by uh, kind of the things we're seeing in more consumer applications? I mean, we hear about the consumerization of IT, and people want to come to work, and their applications work just like <laughs> Google or Facebook. Uh, I mean, how do you look at uh, designing uh, the UI for these types of tools? Yeah, I mean, the way that it really uh, starts is from understanding user needs and, and user workflows, right? So uh, there's, there's a kind of old school way of approaching software uh, development and UI development, which is like, here's all the things that our application can do, let's make interface for them, right? What, what we're looking to do is, is kind of the inverse of that, right? Which is to go out speak with uh, administrators, end users of the database, spend time with them and understand what are the things that you're trying to do? What are the questions you need to answer from your system? And then say, okay, well, great. Let's, let's design an experience that answers those questions. And then once we have an understanding of the workflow and the needs for what, needs to, you know, what the application needs to be providing, then we can break those down into the development stories that um, our development team works with to actually deliver the workflows and the screens that make those workflows possible. Right? So it's, it's the inverse of here's what we can do, let's provide a way to do it, to here's what you need, let's provide a way to give that to you. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you go about getting that feedback? Um, is it through this beta process? Are there other ways you do it you know, mm -hmm. throughout the year when maybe you're not necessarily in a beta uh, situation? For sure. So the yeah, the beta process has certainly been a, a good one. Um, anyone is uh, encouraged to download and install the beta. It installs right alongside the current application. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, a feedback link right in there that you can use to get in touch with. It goes to the entire uh, GPCC team. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can also talk to your Pivotal reps about uh, having them and, and, and us in the GPCC development and product team come spend time with you. And uh, whether that's formally to come and, and help you to get up and running with GPCC, or if it's just allowing us the opportunity to come and spend a couple hours with you or to have some conversations with you over the phone, just to understand better the way that your, uh, your workday goes and the things that you're trying to accomplish so we can design GPCC and the rest of the Greenplum uh, database tools to, to provide for that, right? Um, you can also please email me directly, uh, tmccoy at pivotal.io, and uh, I would be thrilled to talk to you and uh, other database users and administrators about GPCC. Okay, great. Uh, we'll post that information uh, on our blog as well so people can, can easily get in touch. Fantastic. So for those of you listening on the podcast, uh, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Uh, now we're going to turn to uh, a demo that Tim's going to do. He's going to actually show us this, considering we're talking about the UI. Okay, Tim, let's, let's see it in action. Let's see uh, Greenplum Command Center, uh, the new beta with the new UI. Uh, take us for a tour. All right. So what you're looking at here is the main dashboard for Greenplum Command Center. Uh, this is something we often see in our customer sites up on a big wall, right, on a big monitor on the wall. Uh, it just shows a few of the key metrics for the system. Uh, administrators like to look at this and basically as long as they see green on the left and um, no unexpected spikes on the right, they're pretty happy and things are working as expected. 
you'll notice actually right now in our interface there's a dip right at the 1030 mark that's mm -hmm. when my test query set stopped running because it had finished its its uh, pass and so we started it back up and so uh, if I were an administrator of a live system I would see that dip and I would be I'd be pretty pretty nervous right because I suddenly <laughs> I'd have no queries running um, but I could go and and then actually go back and look at that period of time and uh, get a better sense of what was going on. Got it. And that gives you a pretty dramatic view. I mean, you're not going to miss that kind of dip yeah. from yeah. a visual. Uh, so that's obviously a good thing. Yep. Uh, so we talk about what GPCC can do. Uh, at the moment, it's focused on uh, current queries and metrics, uh, current uh, status of each of the uh, the segments, the cluster of of, of uh, machines that are running Greenplum database, and the ability to look back and recall previous uh, information, and we'll show that each of those in a moment. So, so going from this screen here, uh, the most common view is to drive directly into the live queries, and so. Here this screen is showing us, at this current moment, what are all of the various queries that are running on the system. Uh, this call, each of these columns are sortable, and so what you'll see is uh, people who are looking for particular users uh, might sort by the user here and see who's running what. Um, you can also drill into a query, so a common scenario is Administrator will get a an email or a call. Hey, um, I am trying to run this query. I expected it to take, you know, only a minute and a half. You know, I run it pretty frequently. I understand what's happening with it, but it's been going for over five minutes. Can you check out what's happening? Right. So, oh, okay, what's going on? Runtime five minutes. Let me check that out. Right. So you can click into that that query and you get a sense of okay, well, what. How did they write this query? You know, is there anything unexpected? And the, the administrator might take a look through the query uh, text itself. They also can take a look through the query plan. This is the explain plan, and uh, and get a sense of well, wh what is it expecting to do, and, and where might be we be running into trouble. Now, uh, this query now happened to have finished, but if the query was one that was hung or that uh, the administrator had decided was you know was was rogue or was not really doing what it needed to do, you could also kill that query simply by selecting it here and canceling that out. So that's actually the one feature we have in the new Greenplum uh, command center today is the ability for, as long as you have the correct permissions, to identify queries that you'd like to cancel and cancel them out mm -hmm. uh, in the interface. So the other thing that administrators tend to look at are the host metrics. So uh, the hosts are the various segments of the uh, the database. So the way that Greenplum is structured, right, it runs uh, across many machines at once. Mm -hmm. And so, in a, a typical environment here, we see there's a uh, this our test setup here has uh, eight cluster it has eight segments uh, with each have you know their own performance metrics. And what administrators are looking for is pretty uniform performance across each of these segments. And uh, we are developing something new in the GPCC interface to help give administrators a better view of potential skew situations, right? Potential uh, times when one or more of the segments is performing uh, at a higher rate than, than the rest. And so uh, you'll see these bars that grow as the uh, significant difference between the, their own performance and the mean performance is, uh, is indicated here. And that, you know, if you see that, that spike a little bit here and there, it's not a big deal. But as administrators are looking for time, places they can better tune their system, um, this we hope is going to be... Uh, a good way for them to get some first indications that there's skew happening. Mm -hmm. the, the last monitoring view we have is in the cluster metrics. So here we're showing each of the, the key, key metrics for uh, the system at a system level. And this is currently an aggregate view of all the segments uh, 
save the master. So in Green Plum Database, there's a master node that runs uh, you know, the core system, and then the data is spread across all the segments, and the load is generally carried by all those segments. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in the old GPCC, uh, the master was included in these in these views, and it actually really muddied the data set. And so here we've separated that out. So you're seeing just the segment uh, level usage. Okay. Could you sorry? Could you just expand on that a little? So why why is that beneficial to have to not have that um, master? Yeah, right, right, the master in there. Right. So so uh, essentially, the you know the master is kind of a special machine that is uh, doing load that is different than the standard query load for the rest of the servers. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the big bits of feedback that we heard when talking to people about what they did and didn't like about the existing GPCC was that uh, this view, which is, has an analog in, in the old system, uh, was potentially valuable, but because it didn't filter out the master's volumes, uh, it was the data wasn't reliable. It wasn't what they expected to see. So we've addressed that here. Okay, so okay. it was basically an outlier because of its role. Exactly, uh, and this makes more sense uh, uh, when you're trying to administrate administer the the larger cluster. Okay, precisely. Yep. Uh, so I want to continue past history into the system tab and show you the two things that we have in there. Uh, so this is for administrators to help with. Um, kind of uptime of the various segments. So right now we're seeing our, our system is in a healthy state, right? It's a normal state. So everything is up and running. Uh, each of the segments are in their preferred role, right? So in Greenplum, uh, se segments have a primary and a mirror such that if one goes down, the mirror can take over, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so here we see everything is happy. When anything goes down, this system, uh, this screen here, will indicate that and help to uh, show you the status of things as you are rebalancing and uh, recovering your system. And finally, the storage status. So this is really useful to help with uh, long-term storage planning and also with identifying storage skew. So here on our test system, we actually see there's a significant amount of storage skew. Uh, so if I were uh, an administrator of this system and it was a, an environment that uh, we were concerned with high performance, uh, I would be looking into this and, and looking at ways to uh, redistribute the way the data was stored across our system to try to level these bars out. And we can see, again, the usage, not just of the segments, but here we've separated the master, and um, that helps to give, a, again, a clearer view of uh, the storage for the data set and the storage for the kind of more administrative parts of the system. Got it. Got it. So the last thing I want to show is history. And... Um, I'll show you a little peek underneath the covers here. Uh, currently, the way this is our staging environment, and we have uh, the in the to do <laughs> the actual filtering out of uh, selecting the time period for history. Mm -hmm. So that's coming in the next week or so, actually, in this demo environment. So I'm going to switch over to another screen, and this is our design prototype for this feature. So the development team is currently working off of development stories in our tracker backlog to bring this functionality into the actual application. So as I say, as a product manager, I'm going to see that in a couple of days, actually, in, in this uh, staging environment. So what I'll show you now is I'll just click you through the experience of looking back through time uh, and seeing a you know, user-defined time period for uh, historical query metrics and uh, cluster metrics. So when you tab into the history, it starts you out at the metrics tab. And, and a common scenario we hear is, um, boy, so yesterday there was a uh, there were some problem queries, and one of the you know one of the segments went down. Mm -hmm. And so I want to look back at that time period. So I'm going to start with uh, the time period of you know Friday the 16th from 1400 to 1500, 
and let me search that and the results come back for that explicit time period. I can also then, so I can first of all look across here and uh, I can line up, let me show you actually on the live interface. So if we were looking at live data, I could look here and I could, I could see a spike or a drop mm -hmm. and I would be able to look across each of these core metrics and um, help looking you know, for outliers and things that were going to help me to indicate to me that there was an issue I could address. Uh, back to the prototype. I can then click over into queries and um, these two screens are synced. So it looks up the same time period and shows me the current running queries. And seeing that, I can also say, well, actually, I don't need to see all the databases because I know, you know in, my, in my scenario example here that there is an issue with the Olympus database. And so I can just go back, go up into the header and change the query criteria mm -hmm. that I'm using to find the results and filter back down to just the results for that database. So... You know, that's us showing uh, now you can look not just at what's happening now, but at what's happening, what happened during a particular point and period in time in your system. Okay. And, and is, that a, is that a common kind of request or a common uh, thing that the admins uh, typically do in terms of um, uh, monitoring and kind of checking what was, what was happening uh, exactly earlier. right. Right. Our, yeah. Our, our two most important scenarios that we are designing for uh, in this first new release of 3.0 of GPCC are um, things that are you know what's happening on my system right now, and what happened on my system in some known period of time in the past. Got it. Um, all right, great. Well, Tim, thanks so much for this tour. Um, so as you mentioned, you're still kind of building out, uh, building out the new G GPCC uh, UI. It's still in beta phase. Uh, right. And again, if, if any of our listeners want to get involved in the beta, they can do that by... How, how do they do that? Yeah, by... Uh, you can, the easiest way to do it is it's all self-service. You can go to, the, uh, go to Pivotal Network and download the most recent release of Green Plum Command Center. The beta is uh, included in that release. And when you install GPCC, it installs the beta right alongside it on a separate port. So you can continue using your legacy system um, as you uh, evaluate the new system. And um, as of beta 3, we expect that uh, it is feature complete enough that, that we, we uh, plan to see some customers already switching over to using that as their main interface. Um, and we're planning on having a, and a final 3.0 release of that uh, in the fall. So it's coming right up. Okay, great. Well, stay tuned for that. All right, Tim, well, thanks for taking the time today. This was really helpful. Um, really Good. appreciate it. Uh, everybody uh, watching, listening, thanks so much for joining us, and we will see you next time.